Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In my opinion, the clawed calicuthers are one of the most bizarre groups of derived ungulates to ever live, falling behind only cetaceans in terms of their divergent nature. Members of this lineage developed into browsing herbivores with a range of anatomical traits that converged on those of okarpes, giant pandas, ground sloths and gorillas. Where modern ungulate mammals walk on digitigrade hooves and manipulate food with their mouths, calicotheres adapted to a more sedentary mode of feeding, with some species spending a great deal of time sitting on their haunches. In aid of this, ancestral blunt hooves developed into grasping claws for seizing foliage. While they had longer forelimbs and shorter weight-bearing hindlimbs, lower incisors that cropped food against a toothless pad in the upper jaw, and low-crowned molar teeth. First originating in the tropical forests of early Eocene Asia, roughly 48 million years ago, basal calicotheroids would not have seemed too different from their close perissodactyl cousins. The oldest and most basal known calicotheroids were the Eomoropids, which were native to what is now China, Mongolia and Pakistan between 48 and 33 million years ago. Information concerning these animals is quite scarce, and I wasn't able to find any decent images of them, only photos of their teeth and jaws. Despite this, we know that these were relatively small, low-browsing herbivores about the size of sheep. Their molars were low-crowned and fairly generalised, suggesting that they fed on leaves and soft vegetation. The genus Litolophus, at least, appears to have had four-toed feet typical of early perissodactyls, with each digit ending in a hoof-like ungul, suggesting that claws emerged later in the more derived calicotheres. Eomeropidae contains only four genera and probably doesn't constitute a genuine family, more likely being a grade of basal calicotheroids. These animals became extinct at the end of the Eocene, most likely as a result of the cooling and drying climatic trends at the time. However, their more derived sister group, the Calicotheriids, persisted into the Oligocene and had diverged into two major subfamilies by the end of the period. The first of these were the Calicotherians, which developed a suite of highly specialised traits suited for a sedentary browsing niche. These included very long forelimbs, short hindlimbs, and a relatively gorilla-like physique, including knuckle walking on their flexible forelimbs, which bore long curved claws. Members of this subfamily possess some of the longest forelimbs and shortest hindlimbs in relation to each other out of all extinct animals. Calicotherians probably evolved in Asia and appear to have been inhabitants of heavily forested environments, similar to modern giant pandas and gorillas. Tooth wear patterns indicate these animals fed on leaves, fruits, and soft vegetation pulled down from the canopy. One of the oldest known members of the group was the genus Calicotherium, which was native to Eurasia from the Middle Miocene to the Early Pliocene, between 16 and 3.6 million years ago. Standing up to 2.6 metres, or 8.5 feet tall, and weighing up to 3,300 pounds, this slow-moving browser inhabited the closed forests of Miocene Germany, China, and the Indian subcontinent. With a superficially horse-like head, flexible upper lip, and lacking canines as adults, Calicotherium would have utilised its large claws both as hooks for seizing vegetation and for defence against saber-toothed cats and amphicyonids. Callosities on the Ischium imply that these animals would sit on their haunches for extended periods of time, probably while feeding. Another Miocene genus, Calamancia, dwelt in what is now Bulgaria and possessed thickened, dome-like skulls, superficially similar to those of pachycephalosaurs, which were probably used in mating displays or in territorial confrontations. It is also worth pointing out that most Calicotherians were quite brachycephalic, with shorter muzzles and rounder faces than other members of the family, giving these animals an almost ape-like appearance. Another Miocene European genus, Anisodon, was more modestly sized, standing up to 1.5 metres, or roughly 5 feet tall, and inhabited the humid subtropical forests of what is now Germany, alongside great apes, proboscideans, and saber-toothed cats. The Miocene seems to have been the heyday of these animals, with their diversity going into decline during the drier and cooler Pliocene. 
Calicotherians died out in Europe at the end of the Miocene, but persisted in the more heavily forested regions of China and Southeast Asia. Indeed, two genera lingered here into the Middle Pleistocene approximately 781,000 years ago, being the youngest known of all Calicotheres. These were Hesperotherium and Nestorotherium respectively, being relatively similar in appearance. Both possessed short, blunt-snouted jaws and lived slow, sedentary lives in the humid forests of China, Myanmar and India. It's a little mind-blowing to think that these incredibly odd ungulates lived alongside familiar modern animals like tigers, orangutans and giant pandas, as well as iconic extinct forms such as Gigantopithecus. Like most Calicotheres, these two genera were probably largely solitary in life, with their remains being rather rare and fragmentary. Although the reasons for the extinction of Calicotherians in Asia remains uncertain, it was probably due to climatic fluctuations that reduced suitable forested habitats, and perhaps also the arrival of Homo erectus in the region by about 800,000 years ago. Whatever the case, it's a shame that these gorilla horses died out so recently, as I'm sure they would have been fascinating to observe in life. The other major subfamily of Calicotheres were the Schizotherians, which were noticeably different from their Calicotherian cousins in a number of ways. Although both groups possessed clawed digits, Schizotherians also had claws on their hind feet as well. Their overall body plan was also significantly less derived, with their forelimbs and hind limbs being closer in length, while still also walking in a digitigrade stance like other Perissodactyls. In fact, with their elongated necks and browsing lifestyles, these animals were somewhat reminiscent of the modern Okapi, and even had similar elongated flexible tongues. However, the strangest feature of this group was the development of fully retractable claws, a feature more often associated with arboreal carnivorans, such as Felids and the Malagasy Fusa. This allowed Schizotherians to travel across their preferred savanna and forested environments without blunting their claws with these Calicotheres inhabiting a wide range that encompassed most of Eurasia, Africa and North America. One of the best known members of the Sar family, Moropus, is represented by complete skeletons, which is rare among Calicotheres as a whole. Native to what is now the United States, fossil remains have been uncovered from early to middle Miocene age deposits dated to between 20 and 13 million years ago. Standing about 8 feet tall at the shoulder, this animal was comparable to a modern draft horse in terms of size, and was a browsing herbivore that inhabited open savanna woodlands. Walking with an odd, pigeon-toed stance, with its feet turning inward, Moropus would have been quite slow-moving, defending itself from predatory Borophagene canids and Amphicyonids by slashing with its sharp claws. Another large schizotherian was the late Oligocene genus Borisiarchia, which was present in the semi-arid woodlands of Kazakhstan. With somewhat okapi-like body proportions and strong hind limbs, this animal was capable of rearing up to reach high-growing vegetation in a manner comparable to modern goats. Potentially weighing up to two tons, Borisiarchia was also the most massive of all known Calicotheres. Meanwhile, the Middle Miocene North American genus Tylocephalonyx possessed a thick domed skull, much like the distantly related Calamansia although it is uncertain if this feature was used in headbutting or was more of a display structure. Schizotherians thrived during the Miocene, successfully spreading into Africa and North America from their Eurasian heartland. One of the more widespread members of the group was Ancylotherium, which was found across Africa and Eurasia from the late Miocene to the early Pleistocene. Standing roughly 2 metres or 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighing up to 1,000 pounds, this genus possessed a rather goat-like build, and was adapted for browsing in savanna ecosystems. Famously depicted in Walking with Beasts, this was the youngest known Schizotherine, and dwelt alongside early representatives of the genus Homo in eastern and southern Africa. It would appear that the transition to the Pleistocene was very tough on Calicotheres as a whole, with more open grassland replacing the forest on which these animals relied. This also mirrors a decline in giraffoid diversity that occurred at around this time as well, suggesting that these specialised browsers struggled in these shifting conditions. Sadly, these very unique ungulates would finally perish by about 780,000 years ago, with the last forms being the highly specialised short-faced Hesperotherium and Nestorotherium. 
no modern animals can effectively be compared to calicotheres. With elements of their unusual anatomy distantly reflected in giant pandas, gorillas, and the recently extinct ground sloths. In the end, calicotheres were truly a testament to the malleability of evolution. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the Borophagines, the extinct bone crushing canids of North America. See you again soon. Cheerio.